last year, uh, I got in a pretty bad car crash. Yeah. Like I got T-boned by a Prado because I was in a, one of the new Outlanders, the Mitsubishi Outlanders. They're pretty, pretty big, sturdy cars. Like actually, car rode over twice. Your car? Yeah. Yeah. You rode. I rode. Yeah, rode twice. So Fuck. I got I got photos. It looked it was stupid. Like the car was complete write off. But yeah, because it, it, the guy ran a stop sign, and this I had a customer in the back of the car as well. Oh shit! Yeah. So so everything was fine. No scratch. N- no scratch. No no none of us was hurt. Not completely. And you rolled the car twice. Rolled the car twice. Like it hit the the rear the rear like uh, left wheel. So I remember at the time it was happening because I was, I was driving past and I saw him stop, but then I, as I'm driving past, I saw him start to move. So I actually tried to accelerate, but then he hit the rear, like the rear just, corner. Just clipped ya. Clipped and then like, yeah. Me. Wow, wow. It felt like I, it was a slow motion. Like at this, I was like, oh, what the fuck? So yeah. What did it feel like <clears throat> when you're like mid rotation? Oh, it's one of those where I just had to shut my eyes and just hold my body like steady. a roller coaster sort of thing yeah and I actually had to make sure because you usually you know they say if you're a car crash you don't don't you hold your body rigid but because you was rolling out like i didn't want to actually let my body swing and hit your head yeah on exactly the side, and yeah. lucky thing like it's because you know the, the the airbags on the on the on the on the doors so completely yeah the, the car was all good like i mean we were all good not the car was fucked up but the the, the main thing i'm trying to say is like it's that was a rental The very next day, I was in another car. (laughs) Welcome to the Sevo Show. We have a king amongst us. (laughs) King of Afros. Afro King. What's going on? Afro King. Yeah, my man. Also known as Mac. Yep. Where's that from? Um, What, the Afro King? Yeah, start with that. Well, it was was a pretty, like, it wasn't as kind of out there as people would expect but when i first started rapping i went by mac yeah the acronym for that was like most anticipated character Ooh. but then when i actually uh, started setting up my social media pages and things like that by the time you search mac like apple comes up mac makeup macmillan publishes oh yeah so it's just like i had to from then on look like, i need to actually figure out something different and uh yeah it's growing up i always had a thing where my mom would always try to make me cut my hair and uh, for some reason i just always hated it so like i always i think because i followed ludicrous a lot yeah and the fact yeah. that he had an, this is back in the afro <laughs> days so we yeah. had the afro and like i want one of those oh dude so yeah I was, yeah you know yeah <laughs> i wasn't i wasn't blessed with the with the afro jeans uh but uh yeah dude I, i've always wanted yeah, an know, afro nowadays with surgery you can you can get yeah. about anything so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. whatever the kardashians can get an ass i'm sure you can get an afro so true 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 <laughs> but yeah it was just one of those where like uh, I, I just chose to kind of like combine it and just go with Afro King. I don't know where it actually came from, but it just it just hit me like a light bulb moment. Mm-hmm. So I decided to go with that. And yeah, so it's been it's been like that since. And uh, I usually I usually like joke to myself like, okay, because uh, my dad's my dad's bold. So like, okay, what happens when I start to get bold? Yeah. So my like hack towards that is like, yeah, it's African King. So it's nothing to do with the Afro. Ah. It's just African King, you know. Ah, so okay. yeah. So it just those are the two mean, meanings that came. From that, yeah. so yeah, that's that's where it comes from. So, uh, how long have you been in Australia for? Uh, since two thousand nine, January yeah. two thousand nine. So that's going on what 14, 13, 14 years now. Yeah. Yeah. So I was in high school and my family moved here. So yeah. yeah. And whereabouts originally? From Zambia. Zambia. So yeah, yeah. So Zambia, Southern Africa, represent. Uh, got a pretty big following over there. So yeah, usually people are always asking me to come, come and do some shows. I was meant to go there next month, but a few things fell through, so I have to actually put it. Put it on the back burner for a bit, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's uh, came straight here with my family. Uh, my mom came here first. She, she, cause she was a nursing student, so Ooh. yeah, yeah. So came, uh, finished my last two years of high school here. Went to Kent Street, Vic Park. So yeah, so this is pretty much home for me. That's almost half my life I've been here. So you say you're popular back in Zambia doing your music. <clears throat> yeah. Um, were you popular before you left? No. I didn't even do music when I, when I left. So you grew a following and a fan base yeah. whilst you were making music here in Australia. Pretty much. Do you get a, any shit from people going, oh, what are you doing in, in Australia? Um, not so much. I mean, u- usually the, the, the thing I get a lot is like, oh, you should move over east or you should move, uh, move to the U.S., and like it's, I never really saw, cause even like it was by chance that I actually started to get a following in, in, in Zambia. So it was, uh, cause I did a lot of Facebook ads cause like I was early on as far like using my Facebook ads to try and get the name out there. 
And then what I do is because I do like you know how you do the um the targeting for like for each countries. So like I would actually loop all, all the countries into one. But because it works based on the bidding system, so like a CPM because it's so it's so cheap in Zambia, that would always just get get oh. the most traction. So the most engagement or the ads were always showing in Zambia because of the cheaper uh, cheaper bidding. There's less competition so, there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, yeah. So it was just by accident and then I just started getting people like always commenting like, oh yeah, Zambia represent. Like it's just things like that. It was just yeah, nice. by chance. And I was like, okay, maybe I should actually focus most of the attention on that. Yeah. So if, I, if I'm going to, if I want to build a fan base somewhere, uh, somewhere unknown, mm. if they don't have a lot of competition on Facebook, I can yeah. build a random yeah. fan base anywhere I want. You know, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. As long it's like as real it's, estate. Yeah. Because okay. uh, I even found on Google like the cheapest countries like, with, uh, with the cheapest CPM costs, like countries like Malaysia, India, oh, really? like it's uh, some South American countries. I got big, big following in Brazil as well. So that's, that's how I kind of like worked that around. So by the time I get to a point where I'm actually able to tour worldwide, at least that's those seeds have already been planted. You did know? you did you do all this yourself? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. YouTube tutorials. Lots yes. of YouTube tutorials. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I've always been the guy, unless I'm fully passionate about it, like yeah. all in. Um, by then I'm I'm not really needing YouTube tutorials. Yeah. But mm. something like Facebook ads, oh yeah. Never really wanted to learn how to do it, True. but True. yeah, it's it's definitely something that yeah, it's coming back as well. It is. It's coming it really back around. Is, yeah, because I mean, even it's. I think this is uh, 2014, 2015 when mm. I was when I when I was using them, and uh, because it was all just by chance, and uh, it's it just all happened around the same time as um when uh I don't remember like I actually got verified. My Facebook page got verified. I had 2,500 uh, followers. Wow. It had already been verified. And I think it's because I, I, I pumped so much money into the ad, so it was easy for Facebook to be like, okay, this, this guy is just, Yeah, you yeah. know, he's paying us money, so why Let's not? Let's reward him, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So what are you up to now? 43,000. 43,000. On, on Facebook. So Facebook has been my, my primary, yeah. my primary uh, platform. But I've been trying to actually integrate Instagram and, and everything else, get onto TikTok as well. Yeah. yeah. My missus is heavy on TikTok, so she's trying to push me onto it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So uh, you've been an artist now for almost 10 years? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And, and, and how did you start? Like you said you weren't into the making music uh, at a high school. Where did um, that first spark come? I, I think at the core of it, it's always been there as far as like I've always been creative. Because even then and back, even when we were in Zambia, uh, primary school, I remember I did poetry in front of the whole school, like I think year t three or four. So like, yeah, it was a recited poem that I had to learn, but I was still like, I, I, the stage performances has always been a part of it. Like my mom would sign me up to dance at weddings. Um, I was in a dance crew in, in, in my high school back, uh, back in Zambia. And um, I did anything from drawing to, you know, painting. I was in a like, comic, uh, did it like a comic strip for my high school when I was in Zambia. So just different mediums of being creative have always been a part of me. Yeah. But music came when I actually moved here. Because I, I remember this day because it was, um, I think it was year 10. And uh, one time, lunchtime, like there just a group of kids who were actually just going going back and forth, like freestyling and, you know, trying the rust. But because I was always introverted, so it's not like I was called to even try it. I was just curious. I'm like, oh, okay, that would be an interesting to do. And like the next class I went to, like I just started writing, like just trying to write a verse. And that by the end of the class, I'd written a whole, like a page full of, yeah. So Some it just, bars to spit. Yeah, you yeah. know, so it just came out of nowhere, but... I, I know it comes back from, um, I, I saw you were talking with, with McShane about sitting in front of the stereo and writing down lyrics. I did oh, the yeah. same thing with Chameleon Air and Ludacris, Eminem, just because usually I, I pick up things a lot visually. So usually if I see something being done, it, I just re reverse engineer mm -hmm. it and I you know, can break down the mechanics of it. So I think that's how I learned to rap. It's like a lot of Eminem's verses because I'd have to sit and actually analyze how he's writing the bars and I'm like, okay, this I'm breaking down all the mechanics and they just stuck with me. Amazing. So yeah, by the time you know, I was here year 10, I was like, okay, maybe I, I do have this, this, this rap thing going. Cause yeah, I showed the first friend I showed is like, wait, wh where did you get this? Like I wrote it. No one believed me. Wow. So just, I don't know. I just, yeah. Music just, just became a part of me. That's awesome. So, yeah. So you, you brought your poetry 
stuff from from when you were younger. Yeah. And then that carried on. And so your so your inner your child stayed with you. Your inner yeah. child stayed oh, with 100%. you. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. That's kind of like it reminds me when I was that age, mm. like in primary school, I was always fascinated about capturing stuff. Yeah. With the photos. Yeah. Right. 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 And. I just didn't have my own camera. I didn't really think about asking for one. I was mm. into other stuff like, you know, sports and video games. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was always curious about photos. Yeah, And true. when I finally got, I think it's when um, the, the phones had the cameras, started getting the cameras. I was like, oh. You got more control I was, with it. I was, I was making, I was documenting everything. Nice. Like I had a YouTube channel back in 2006. Right, okay. And I just wish that I pushed it. Yeah, yeah. You know, Being back consistent then. with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just didn't have anyone else to kind of go, yes, you mm. know. I remember I put up, I ripped off a, a YouTube, no, I ripped off a TV ad. I figured out how to record uh, TV, which was yeah, hard. True. And then I, I learned how to transfer that to the computer, which wasn't easy back then. You had to do a lot of different things. Yeah, yeah. And then I learned how to crop it, put it into the YouTube and upload it. And there was, nice. a, there was a, an ad. I remember put up. I just put up on YouTube. I was like, "This is funny." I put it up. True. It went viral. Nice. Like like early days. Yeah, It, yeah, it yeah. had over a hundred thousand views. And, wow. You know, back then that was that would have been like a you, you could have monetized. It. Yeah, oh, 100%. percent. But I didn't think about that. Yeah. Because yep. I just didn't care. Um, <laughs> True. Or I didn't even know. But I've yeah. always I always wanted to like stream stuff and yeah. document stuff. I got into streaming a little bit, like video games. Yeah. Okay. But it was always the cameras. Yeah. And then now yep. I'm, now I'm here. True. It's like the inner kid is. It's all you know. You have to let that inner kid. Like I, I always, I always ask like people our age, like because mm. you're relatively the same age. If you graduated in yeah. 08, 09. Uh, 11. 11. 11, Yeah. So you're like what? 29, 28. 29. Yeah. yeah. So we're still relatively the same age. I'm 32. Yeah. Okay. I I graduated in 08. Yeah. I remember by within three years, I always had a little point and shoot camera on me, like those little digital ones. Yeah. True. And then I eventually got a DSLR and then that's when it started. Change the game. And I, yeah, and, but like I always was like persistent. My inner child yeah. was always persistent. I never let that die. Yeah, yeah. And then, I think it's it, it's an amazing thing when you're actually able to hold on to that because yeah. you never know the different directions where it could take you. Because mm. even now with me, as as far as music, like, yeah, uh, I feel like music, that's that's my medium now, but I don't know if I'm going to be rapping for the rest of my life. Like uh, I'm, I'm curious about so many different things. Yeah. I want to try different things, like because I have a passion for like not uh, like comedy, like at some point because like I'm so um, analytical, even like stand up comedy. I watch yeah. a lot of like even I don't know if you know um, Flagrant Two, uh, like the the podcast like Andrew Schultz. That's someone who I've been following for quite a, quite some time. Chappelle. I got into Chappelle, er, er, like Dave Chappelle early on. But the Chappelle show back in the day on SBS. Oh, it was crazy. All time. Yeah. yeah. Like all time favorites as well. Like yeah. it, 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 I actually went to see Dave Chappelle when he came oh. to Perth. Yeah. Nice. Unforgettable show. Like I'm, I'm glad I got to do it. That was a birthday present from my missus. And like, yeah, that raised the bar. Now I got to come up with something because our birthday is in a couple of weeks. I'm like, okay, I got the, the bar's been raised. But yeah, like even things like I, I, at some point I'd love to just for the for the heck of it, like even go to like an open mic and just try try my hand at comedy mm. because by then I already have I've I've built up the confidence to be on stage and just let it translate to yeah you know the comedy side of things. It, it's it's not easy. Uh, no, yeah, I mean I've, yeah. I've talked with a few comics, uh, comic friends, uh, Dave Hughes. Yeah, he's okay. saying he's saying you need to do it. I'm like oh. true. Yeah, but when he's saying. He's saying that, like yeah. Dave. Like, yeah. I'm just like, okay, like Andrew you know? Wolf. Andrew Wolf is just like, yeah, you gotta do it, man. Yeah. You gotta yeah. do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, um, I get that. I get but that. But I just, I'm just not ready because I'm very yeah. analytical as well. Yeah, and I, I know exactly what you mean when, when like, when I watch comics. Mm. Um, like nowadays, uh, yeah. I'm like, I've seen all of it. I've heard all of it. Yeah, there's nothing really new. And 100. And like. And I still see the the same comics that you know my mates, and they still make me laugh. Yeah, they come yeah. up with some banger, banger, mm. um, you know, uh, one liners. Yeah, uh, like Daniel Delby the other the other night, he said something, and I just started crying. Oh, was really? Just, it was so good. Yeah. And um, but yeah, now I'm like, I want to come in and say, and do something completely different. True. Yeah. But until I know what it is, you know, and you got to trial and error. You and, got to. Yeah. And bomb and stuff. But like 100%. with all these things that you want to do um, mm. and you're doing, um, how are you getting by? How are you making a living? Uh, actually, I drive Uber. Uber? 
I was actually working before I came here. So ah, yeah, I've been doing that for about probably five, six years because mm-hmm. uh, before that I actually worked at uh, I worked for cash converters. So I worked there for like six, seven years. Worked my way to be like I was managing one of their stores because uh, this was on the, on the corporate side of things as well. Do you like negotiate with the pricing and stuff? Yeah, like, I did all of those. How much you want for that? Yeah, ah, I did I everything. Is that is your favorite show on um, on TV? Porn stars? Uh, I actually never really watched it, but I've seen clips of it, and it's it's a similar experience. It's a similar experience because you don't have every expert under the sun at your fingertips yeah. that lives down the road at any exactly. moment. Nah. That's such nah. bullshit, man. Yeah. They're talking about this medi- medieval sword and it's like, yeah, I've got a, I've got a guy. <laughs> He's going to come have a look at it. Yeah, and then yeah, like yeah. next second nah. he rocks up and nah, I'm just like, it's, yeah. I mean, it is Vegas, you know. Exactly, exactly. But, um, so cash converters, you, yeah. were, you were negotiating deals. Yeah, and yeah. I worked everything from the retail store. I was in the buys and loans area. I worked in the finance area. Well, that's, that's helpful because that can translate translate into when you start picking up more gigs, yeah. more, oh, more musical gigs, when when the, the venue manager or someone you're negotiating prices, you're just like, oh, you know, ah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I'm not, I'm not doing it for any less than that much. hundred percent. A hundred percent. Plus even, I, I know it helped me with my people skills. Cause like I said, I was introverted. That changed when I worked at Cash Converters. Amazing. Cause I was on the retail store and I had to deal with like hundreds of customers a week. Mm. And like, even by the time I left, even now I, I worked in the Victoria Park store. So when I go back now, they still customers. They ask, "Oh, is Max still here?" Like, so you know that that still goes on. But that's that I kind of get I had to get out of my comfort zone. Yeah. So yeah, I was there over six years, and then uh, by the time I was managing one of their stores, that's kind of at the same time the music started to pick yeah. up. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that the retail side of things grew you out of that introverted yeah. side because oh, I mean a lot of people hate retail for obvious reasons yeah and then they they hate people even further yeah um yeah. Oh, and then they, sure. they they grow they grow even a bigger shell to hide yeah. into yeah but you managed to come out of it what do you think was the difference for you um i think for me it's just uh of a general curiosity like it just in general it's like it's it i don't really take myself too seriously mm. like it's uh because growing up i didn't uh because I haven't really had that conventional type of upbringing. I went to boarding school, I was 12 years old, and then uh, I was there for three years. My mom came here two years before we did. So it was like kind of like it's uh, kind of hard to be, to kind of find ways to entertain myself. So I didn't really, each time because I moved around so much, I didn't even get a chance to make close friends or yeah. even have, have friendships. So yeah, the, just that, it's it's not like to say like I was, craving the friendships, but I just learned how to be without them. Yeah. So then by the time I was actually growing up, if, if I hadn't done cash converters, I'd probably, yeah, it would, it would affect what I was, what I'd be able to do. I, could, yeah. I, I wouldn't be able to do this even coming onto the, this podcast. Yeah, I mean the universe, and this is your first podcast too, so. 100%, yeah. Glad to be uh, that thank guy. Thank you very much, I appreciate yeah. it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and that's uh, amazing how the universe works. It mm. creates, it's a vessel for you to go, you take oh, every opportunity. Straight up. You know, you, you run cash converters and then and then what made you get out of that game to get into Uber? Um, it's because I, when I was there, I was working full time and I just kind of started because I, I, I'd done the music um, fresh out of high school. And then I think my graduating year, I'd already had um, a lady like her name's Kayla. She, she was a lawyer, so she already wanted to manage me like I'd wow. been an artist manager. Uh, yeah, because I, this is like, it was kind of like one to the next. So I'd, I think two months after graduating, I was already recording at SAE Studios. Uh, before they went to this the campus here, it was like on uh, off Adelaide Terrace. So yeah, I was recording into the studio there. She was organizing gigs for me. I remember uh, performing like one a uh, few times in Armadale. I performed at Eurobar. So this it kind of just started to steamroll. But then at that time, like it's I wasn't ready for it. Like it. I wasn't ready and she wasn't either because <clears throat> she kind of started, she had to focus more on her career. So it just kind of like, it was like a mutual thing where like, okay, um, cause I, I didn't even know what direction I wanted to go. So then I kind of put the music on the back burner and then just worked at Cash Converters for years. And then out of nowhere, um, uh, cause I remember I was taking my, my, my little sister cause I dropped all my, my, my siblings to school on my way to work. And then a beat came on and I was just rapping and my sister was recording the video. And then, yeah, I just happened to put it on Facebook and then just the organic engagement, like it just started to go <clears throat> to go viral. And then I was like, okay, that pushed me into wanting to, to do that a bit more. 
Did you did you feel like you need that needed that validity? Um, maybe at the start. I mean, because it's it's not until like the person I am now, I've reflected on times when I did need that, and that uh, that's you kind of get misconstrued as far as like, oh, what's the purpose you're doing this for? Mm, like, it's an it's, interesting one because yeah. like, let's say you put a video up and it never gained traction. Yeah, where do you reckon? Where do you reckon you'd be now? Um, Would you reckon you'd still be doing it, no matter what? Probably not. Probably not. I mean, because I, because even then, uh, like growing up, I was going based on the, just the, the conventional thing with my parents so that I was going to try and study medicine or do engineering. African parents is similar with Asian parents. Like you got to be a doctor or an engineer. Target parents, yeah. You know exactly. So like that's 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 a, the track I thought I was going on. But even as far like with my cash converters, uh, like working with them, by now I would be like a one one of the head office because like, they got the head office in the city. In the, yeah, in they've Perth. got a succession plan. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah it, it started in Perth. That's where cash converters. And you wouldn't have from. you you wouldn't have minded that. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have. Like I was the youngest person to gain management. Like yeah. it's, you know, like African. On top of that, I was African, and happened to be the youngest person to actually actually made management. So I know something could have come from that. Mm. Um, and it's like, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I'm confident in my skills to actually achieve things out regardless of what it is. Like usually if I apply myself to something, I know something yeah. that can, can come out of it. Yeah. You, 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 you're analytical. That's what analytical yeah. helps you. Yeah, with. exactly. So, exactly. <clears throat> so yeah, there's a few moments that I'm, I'm, I'm seeing from your life that mm. have happened. They all come into to the play. Formative. Yeah. But you, but you loved to do it anyway. Oh, I loved it. And it. you would still be doing it no matter what. And yeah. there's just a difference between you loving it, someone else loving it, and you both mm. loving it. Yeah. If they if they fell out of love with it, you'd still be doing it. Yeah. And if you fell out of love with it, that's a different story. It's a different story. And yeah. I say that all the time. And so it, yeah. yeah. I mean, based, based on you saying that, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm analyzing it right now, um, it's, like I say, cash converters made me a bit more extroverted, but music made me more expressive. Yeah. So that's because I'm not a generally expressive guy or I'm not an emotional guy even. Like I'm generally like calm and, you know, centered. But when I rap, it's like it's just it's still expressing things I wouldn't necessarily express, you know, in everyday life. Yeah. So it's, it's a secondary voice. Yeah. So how do you bring that out? Um, it just, it's a switch I just turn on and off, if I'm being honest. Is it easy? Uh, fairly, yeah. Uh, it, it is, it yeah. is, yeah. I find I it difficult. Yeah, I don't know how, but it's just. Um, I'd say the the journey I've been on has kind of been semi. I mean, this will, this will be overinflating my ego, but it's it's semi monk's journey where you have to kind of like separate from the world. I feel like that was my childhood, where like you, because even um, I didn't. From tw- like, if you imagine, twelve years old, <clears throat> I I went to an all boys boarding school. So then, in African boarding school, it's yeah, you, you kind of read. It's a milder version of less like a military school in the sense that I didn't have access to the internet. There were no girls. You know how like it's being around girls is formative in its own way. <clears throat> so let's say I had to learn to not even learn like it's because uh, you know when you start to hit puberty like it's. The hormones just that uh, even like uh, now, like as men, where more some of our actions may be motivated by wanting to attract women or yeah. women. They it's women are a big motivator for a lot of our actions. So that was already not a part of me like growing up. So I was it's a good thing because I went to the same boarding school my dad did. So that on top of that, um, I didn't even start listening to hip hop music until I was fifteen, sixteen. So a lot of, let's say, uh, cultural influences or things that form how we operate, mm-hmm. I was kind of like, let's say, quarantined from a lot of those things. So by the time I was kind of, let's say, coming out into into the world, it was on a later stage when I'd already, uh, my foundation was already kind of like cleared. So everything was just coming after the fact. <clears throat> so that that's what I, I put it down to because it's like, yeah, it's if I try to rationally explain it, uh, like it's, yeah, that, that's that's what it comes down to. Yeah. yeah, so it's just little things like that. I love that. Yeah, I, love that. I appreciate it. So now, so now you've gotten that, that switch that you can 
turn off and on. Yeah. Do you need to be in a zone or anything like that or can you just do it any time? Uh, it just comes any time. Uh, it's... I think it, it at this point is also uh, I'm at a point where it's different switches as well, because I don't, um, I don't really say I'm a rapper per se. Per se. It's because even now I, I wear so many different hats because uh, me and my boys we started our label where we got like an artist who's who's a part of it. So it's you got a label of, now. Yeah. What's your label called? Uh, it's Apex Presents. Ah oh, yes. Yeah. yeah so yes. this is label. So it's it's rooted into because. My journey has been on where well, like a lot of the things I've done have kind of been things I've actually had to chase on my own. No one really, no one can come and take credit and say they 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 brought opportunities to me. Like yeah. it's you know. So these are things I had to learn to do on my own. So now it's a case of where I'm kind of like you know giving back or like trying to uh, impart those things to to one, what like the younger guys that are on the team as well. So it's when I say I wear many hats because I I've, I shoot some of the music videos I do uh, editing I do producing I have my studio whether it's like I mix and master my own stuff I do my marketing promoting the shows like it's everything is all in house <clears throat> so it's like it's 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 actually helpful for me to to turn that switch off so I can I haven't written a new song in like probably two or three months I haven't had to because there's other things that have needed my attention. That makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I've got I've got the same sort of kind of scenario. And yeah, yeah. No, I, I can see like, it. Yeah, like I've got I've got my brand, and I just did that for fun. And now yeah, it's, and now it's a thing. Mm. And I mean, everybody has a brand. Yeah, <laughs> there's you know? a South Park episode about that, a recent one. Oh, really? A, a good brand. True, true. It's the one with the, the the royal family that make fun of the oh, royal family. Oh, yeah, I saw a snippet of that of with yeah. Harry and Meghan. There's a whole, yeah, there's yeah, a whole, because yeah. uh, you know how South Park's always got like two yeah. storylines going at the same time? No, exactly. The other storyline in that episode is building your own brand. True. It's so funny. Yeah, right. But, check um, that out. Uh, yeah, everybody's got a brand. It's just mm. whether or not they want to publicize it. And yeah. I publicized mm. mine without a care and look where, where it's yeah. gotten me. Oh, 100%. The only thing <clears> about, you know, pushing out your own brand is you got to be ready for what comes with it. Yeah. Especially if, you know, get noticed by everybody. Mm. I say a lot of people don't, uh, they're not ready for it or they don't, they don't know what to do with it. Yeah. So yeah. they either fizzle out, mm. burn out or whatever, yeah. or they get taken advantage of yeah. from managers that are, you oh, know, 100%. opportunists, but yeah. they, they're they not doing it for the right reasons. They don't want yeah. you to grow. They just want to take that large oh, sure. cut and, yeah. Yeah. you know, pimp you out. Exactly. So you managed to do it on your own. Yeah. And now with Apex, you're doing, you're helping others. Yeah. Um, doing things that you wish you knew you had someone to help you with. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 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 Um, and even then, like, it's because the, the thing with, like, let's say with how we started Apex is more... Um, everyone on the team, these, these are guys I've been, that have been with me from the very start. Like when mm. I first started, my very first show I went to, these are the same guys that, that, that came to him. So one of them is Naz. <clears throat> so he's a PT. He's actually getting onto producing now. He's actually making beats and stuff like that. So it's, it's more like a collective. We, would, we each have our own brand, but we have a collective vision we're working towards. So like Apex is kind of like the fuel to actually uh, drive that. Because I, I, I have my own personal brand, like Afro King Entertainment, which is centered around everything Afro King related, like the music or my music videos or when it comes to the publishing and things like that. So that's, I kind of had to compartmentalize all of these little things. Yeah. The, yeah. The kids, the kids, uh, you're saying making beats, the kids, I, these days it's becoming really popular. Mm. Like yeah. um, Kale here, he, he loves, he go, gets home and just starts DJing. Yeah, and yeah, practicing. yeah. Practicing. Nice. Um, and he's making his own mixes. Yeah, and, nice. And it's becoming a real big thing. Like the, oh, kids, the kids at school when I was teaching, yeah. they'd get on like Garage Band or something yeah, and yeah. like samples and whatever and, and yeah. doing that. And I've always been interested in that too. I've got like a little sam uh, sample deck there oh, with really? a little keyboard and little pads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel um, that. And, uh, you know, Ableton and things like that. Yeah. It's it's like a really easy time to mm. create visually, audibly. Therapeutic you know, as well. Therapeutic, yeah. yeah, you, can, yeah. You, can, you can just escape for hours. Mm, 100%. And the only problem with that is – and I've, I've faced this with the pictures yeah. and the photos is you have a passion mm. and then you get noticed 
and then you start getting paid. Yeah. And then that could potentially become a chore. Mm. Have you come across this yet? Um, I did uh, a few times. Uh, it's I notice it more when I, if let's say because I, I'm so, there's a lot of times when I could actually work so well with other people. So let's say if it's a collaboration because I usually have just ideas just come nonstop. So a lot of the time it may be, I will come up with, let's say ideas that <clears throat> would benefit everyone as a whole, but let's say that the passion for that idea may not be the same. So I had to like kind of like learn to um, even compartmentalize what, or even where, where to prioritize those things, if that makes sense. And yeah, I've, I've had times in the past where you put, yeah, you, you put energy in, in or, too much energy in the people that you shouldn't have put it towards. Uh, and like, I'm let's say neglecting the guys that are on the team and I'm not putting the energy towards them. Yeah. So I had to kind of like learn, learn those things. And like you, if, if it's something that is rooted, it, it's always had to be rooted in like that feeling of fun for me. Like it's, if I'm editing one of my own videos or even like when I had the studio, like it's at some point I was actually um, producing for other people. So like I'd actually turned the studio into a business and actually had people coming in paying for studio time. And I noticed like as I'm actually mixing and um, mixing other people's stuff, I'm not as enthusiastic about it. It feels like work. Yeah. Compared to if I was actually, it's the original seed, like, okay, I got an amazing idea for a song. Like it's... Usually I won't sleep. Like I'll keep going until, you know, it's like done. it's, yeah, exactly. Until yeah. it's done. So just noticing those little things like that, like, okay, yeah, it's, it, it always have to follow that feeling of it being fun. And that makes the biggest difference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so when you do, are, are you onboarding staff and things like that to help um, you take care of the jobs that you don't really want to do? At, at this point, that's, that kind of seems like the, it'll be the next, next logical thing. Cause I mean, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it kind of gets to a point where you are kind of on the verge of burning out. So sometimes I actually have to take a step back and actually yeah. recharge and Absolutely. then come back. Yeah. So these are things I've had to learn. I've had times when I've burnt out and then like, okay, it's, you, you go over the, the, the point of no return. So yeah, now I'm a lot more aware of it. So even like times when I'm, um, if you know, if I need to just separate from everyone and just, you know, just be in my own space. Because, I, I mean, from a spiritual perspective, I'm a, <clears throat> I'm a person who needs to recharge energy, like, in my own self. Even, like, even like my partner, like, she knows as well. It's like, if I need just to be on my own, I just need to recharge first. And then I'm, I'm, I'm able to give energy to everyone. Yeah. So just... You got to look after yourself first. You do. You do. Because, I mean, it's... It, 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 you don't help anyone if, if it's depleting to you. Yeah, you you're know? no good to anyone if you're... Yeah. Burnt out. Especially. Exactly. You know, you just, yeah. that's how forest fires come up. You can, you can get, um, you can do a burnout test online. Oh yeah. And you can check yourself in. Um, True. And I take it every week, every yeah. Thursday. Okay. Every Thursday. And it gives you a score out of, oh, I think it's like 60 or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I've gotten a couple of times where it was like a 43, 44, and that's mm. like borderline danger levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and now I'm like back below 30. Yeah. And, you know, there's always stress, but it's, no, it's self-inflicted stress. I actually stress. have to check that out. Because actually, I remember the, the very first time I actually felt um, the feeling of actually being burnt out or, like, overwhelmed was, um, I think it was 2017. It's because um, I was having, uh, I managed to win this competition to open for YG and actually go, go on tour with them. Now, the, the thing was that was, like, you actually, the competition was you had to actually do, like, a, a freestyle video, like, come up with a, a video to actually, and then get people to vote on this on Facebook. <clears throat> so this is how Facebook ads actually helped me out to actually win that, because... Um, you bought it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I literally, I, I made countless videos, and I was just chucking ads, and just, it, cause it, it, because it was so easy for me, like, I'd even, like, it's just on a on a on a normal day I could put up a video and then get like a few hundred to a thousand people actually liking liking those posts like I'd, so I think one of them the actual competition video I had like 1,500 people had liked it 250 shared and then 200 comments and then I went through every single person and added them to my personal Facebook hey I noticed you liked this video it'll mean a lot if you go and vote I did that for days 
like hundreds of people just messaging, messaging. That's how I won that competition. And that, that's at the time I was working at Cash Converters. And this is like, it's our, this is the first time I, because I, I'm not the type to get insomnia, but I literally was getting insomnia from that. Like I, I could not sleep because I was juggling so many of these different things as to like, that, it was an obsession for me. Yeah. But then that's when like um, my, my, my homeboy Nas, like he, like, he kind of put me onto um, the idea of starting to meditate. And that's when I, I had to meditate from that feeling of being burnt out. And that's when I found meditation. And that's ever since then, even like I did a 10, 15 minute meditation before coming here. So it's always, those things just always help me. Like it's, you know, yeah. because it came at a time when I actually saw like the instant shift as far like it's, it's not like every other day when someone, oh, you need to meditate. Like it's usually, oh, okay. <laughs> but if it's a case where the place of desperation and you see the instant, instant effect it gives you. So it's like, yeah, it's from there on, it's like, yeah, it was, yeah. it was an easy enough thing to do. So how do you, how do you meditate? <clears throat> how do you meditate? Um, I think I, I'm at a point now where I do, for me, it's like silent meditation. So because I can feel when my mind, my mind is actually clouded with thoughts. So I just sit and it helps usually if I'm in a quieter place or if, I, if I'm in the car, I just because the aircon is going, I just sit and actually just listen. You see, I listen more for like a steady, a steady sound, a consistent sound, like the air, the sound of the aircon, like the the fan, computer fans we're hearing. It's because that doesn't have a stop to it. I just listen to that and it keep bringing my attention back to it and actually notice my mind. That's the present. It's bringing you back to the present. So my mind actually starts to quieten down from that. But before, I mean, it, it's, it, it comes on different days. Sometimes I need a meditation to actually help me feel energetic about going to perform on a show. Sometimes just put on affirmation. It's always based on what I'm feeling on that day. But because I've done it so many times, like I know what meditation is good for me based on what I need it yeah, for. The scenario, yeah, the scenario based. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you're, uh, you went from being a school kid, mm. just observing the, the art of rap and, yeah. now, and now you're doing it, you're performing it yeah. and you're starting for uh, artists. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah. You won competitions. How yeah. did, with, with that gig... What, what what came of it? What did you get out of it? Um, Apart from experience. It was more... What is it? Was there a networking opportunity you may remember? Was there uh, a link up with someone? Yeah, was there, oh, yeah, as far as like a link up, yeah, I definitely built one as far as like uh, even with there's an artist from uh i think it's in melbourne right now uh i know he was in gold coast for a while, free while so this is early on like this is at a time when i could um so he done pretty much the, the equivalent of what i was doing let's say with the facebook these are the time when facebook was also the same way soundcloud rap facebook at a time had, had its own time when there was a rising of influences i, I like to think i was part of the, like the the, the, the Facebook era of influencing, that's that's kind of where my, my come up was. And he was another one who was doing the same thing in Gold Coast. So he actually happened to win the Gold Coast start of the competition. Oh, cool. So he was the opening act that was going to open for, for them then. But then he actually messaged me with, a, with an idea to say, um, do you want to um, do you want to share stage time? Like, you know, like you, you won Perth and I won... I won, I think, no, it was Brisbane that he won, sorry, not Gold Coast, but he's based in Gold Coast. Like, oh, yeah, did, if we share stage time, like, they, they gave us, like, 15 minutes of stage time, but it's like, yeah, if we cut that down to seven minutes each, we get to both perform in both cities. So they're like, yeah, why not? So he, he flew over here, he performed here, and then I flew over to Brisbane and went to perform over there. So, yeah, that was, that was a really big thing because that was my first, okay, because it, it, it looks good for the resume as well, you know? I performed... Yeah, I've, I've opened for YG, but not just that. I've toured with YG technically. Like, you know, I've, I've been to the Brisbane show as well. Like, took even, like, the photos. One of my my, my favorite photos I have is, like, me and Free Wire. We're on stage and, like, a sea of, like, three, 4,000 people behind us. And this is, like, two, three years into me actually doing the music. Amazing. So I've done this without management, without, you know. This has all been just ideas that have come. Okay, let me try this. Let me try that. So, yeah, that was uh, – it was more like – um. It, it's a nudge to tell me to keep going. Yeah. More than anything. <clears throat> keep going yeah. and, and, and put out ads on Facebook. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's been your most recent achievement in the music space? Um, in the music space? 
I managed to get a cosign from Buster Rhymes. Wow. So yeah, like one of my songs, Coronation, like it's it's got Buster Rhymes on the intro, like actually introing the song for it. So how does that work? Um, this was just like it's just through uh, because it's it's you you notice it with a lot of artists. They usually try and do like the the promo promo runs on Instagram. So I actually happened to message him on Instagram. And we kind of like had, had a bit of a back and forth, uh, back and forth rapport. And yeah, sent him the song. So he liked it. <clears throat> and he was prepared to actually, um, and he was like, it's, um, well, I talked to his management as well. And they were pretty good as far as like, uh, because let's say seeing the, f um, seeing the potential. Because at the time, it's like, yeah, obviously I had to pay for it. But it was, this comes, it's music business. But at the same time, this is, um, it's it's someone who, who I've actually interacted with who's aware of me and who's actually put, you know, the stamp of approval as far as like that. So, you got the Buster Rhymes stamp of approval. You know, yeah, I mean, because you, you, you hear the voice instantly. Like, hey, yo, this Buster Rhymes, the general of the conglomerate movement. Big up the homie Afro King. Uh, this next song is called Coronation. This is the verbatim what I said. Like, the Zambian King from Perth, Australia. Uh, African, let's do it. So this is, that's his voice. You hear the song, yeah. you know that's Did Buster Did it cost Rhymes. you anything? Oh, yeah, it did. It did. Um, What's can you talk about his fee? Uh, yeah, it was like a thousand bucks US. Thousand dollars. Yeah, to have yeah. Buster Rhymes on your track. Yeah, do you reckon it'd be the same still, or do you reckon that fee's gone? Uh, I mean, it would be the same for that. It, a verse would definitely have a lot more. A verse is a different story. Yeah, I heard like Snoop Dogg, one of a verse from Snoop Dogg in a song is a two hundred fifty k. Yeah, I'm That's sure. Crazy. I'm sure. Buster, I don't know if Buster would be at, at, at the same point as Snoop, but yeah. A verse would definitely cost a lot more. Like I, I didn't even want to entertain the conversation because I wasn't there yet. But uh, because it kind of built that relationship, because even it got to a point where uh, like I messaged to say, okay, we're gonna shoot the music video for the song. We actually because I just got so busy and it, it's we never couldn't actually get to actually work uh, work it logistically. But he was prepared to actually shoot a video to the same intro he did and we could just attach it to the music video. Oh, that's even cooler. You know? Yeah. So, did you do that or? Uh, what's that? Did he do it? Oh uh, no, it would like it, it would have been extra cost. Like it would have been half half the half the cost of what it paid in the first place. But you know, it's still that's still, still there if I want to do it now. But I mean, it, we just haven't actually gotten around to it. It's just it's it's on the long list of like I've seen you got a long list of <laughs> things to do. It's on my long list. Like, okay, this potential. So it's more like trying to prioritize what to go with first. Yeah. Because um yeah, I mean, it's, we'll probably talk about it later on. But there's uh, even plans for this year so there's big plans for this year we're trying to actually strive towards and like yeah just the song alone having him on the song alone was a big was yeah, a big tick for me that's cool so yeah so now on spotify it's gonna be name of song featuring buster rhymes Is yeah that like yeah, oh, yeah that's it's cool. uh hosted by buster rhymes ah yeah cool. yeah yeah so it's like a dj drama or uh when they do like mixtape hosting or like fat man scoop things like that so yeah, it's so that that's that that was a big thing for me because Bust is like one of my uh, influences, like people who influence me as far as like rap. Like even to this day, I still listen to his verses. I'm like, okay, yeah, I still pick up I mean, things. The man rhymes quick. Oh, ridiculous! Can you ridiculous. do that? Can you do what he does? Uh, it's with what's your what's your <clears throat> average tempo in your music? It ranges. It ranges. Uh, I can do like the quick double, double time rapping as well. And you can do it like freestyle as well. No, no. I was gonna say. No, nah, freestyling. It's better put you on the spot. Yeah, no. Nah, it's I actually have a. I was I was watching the the Mac Chain Mac Chain one. Like Mac Chain put me in a spot one time. Yeah. I'm sure he will co corroborate this story for me for you. <laughs> so, because I'd performed with him at Collab a few times, like even like when he was hosting it, like at, at the Moon Moon Cafe, and then because he'd also seen, because usually like it's I can do like the really quick rapping, but. It's one of those where I have to train for it. Like I, I mastered a verse to a point where like I, I can I can do it, but it's not something that just comes yeah. naturally. So I, I walk into like this. I walk into Moon Cafe and then Mike Shane seemed like, hey, Africa. So he's like, oh yeah, come over. It's like it's and then he just goes to the drummer. He's like. Oh yeah, this is Afro King. Like he's really dope with a with a double time. Like oh yeah, so I'm I'm still trying to process what what's going on because I came as I came to be part of the audience. I wasn't expecting to actually go on stage. So before I know it, I'm just yanked onto the stage, and then the beat just starts going. And McShane, because no. you know McShane, he's like the, one it. of the, yeah one of the best freestylers out there. Like he's 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 top tier freestyler. Even like rap in general, like he's I, I respect his talent. 
I was not ready that day. I was just put it that way. So <laughs> I know I know he he probably he probably felt bad, but mm. that, it's just one of those things. Like yeah, it's it, it wasn't the day for it. But also it's like I didn't. I, it's, this is before I could even. Um, I had the stage confidence to even be able to relay like, okay, yeah, I'm not ready for it. Let's try something else. Improvise. How do you know you're ready <clears throat> for it? What's that? How do you know you're ready for it? Um, I, I look at rap like it's, it's, it's a sport. Like it's literally like a sport. Like if, if you, let's say, play footy and actually train every day, your cardiovascular is going to be built up to a point where you can, any day, you can jump into the field. Same with content creation. Hundred percent, hundred percent. That's that's how I look at it. So even mm. like freestyling, it, it's a muscle for me. Like if if I'm consistently writing or constant, consistently rapping, my mind is thinking in rap and rhymes. If I do, if I don't do it for a long time, it's one of, I have to actually think think at it. Have you ever rapped to one of your Uber? Oh, uh, lots of times. Yeah, lots of times. You that's, should do that as a thing where you put a little GoPro camera there and I rap to about you. It. You know, a few people have suggested that it's. That would be cool. It would be. I'd probably do it like it if it was like, a, okay, where I decide, okay, this is the day I'm going to do it. Because for me, I also, because sometimes I will consciously, because um, it's, it's usually people when they get into the car and Uber with me, like they're curious enough where they try to actually start asking my story. Sometimes it's like it's, I pick whether I'm Mac or I'm going to be Afro King. Sometimes I'm like, <laughs> I won't, I'll steer the conversation away from the music. They'll be like, oh, what do you do this full time? like, Oh yeah, you know, I just have my business as well. So I'm, I'm, it may be a time when I'm not even in the mood to actually start going into the rap direction. And it's like it's I, I like that that separation from it. Yeah, yeah. You Fair know? Enough. Well, that's where the you know switch comes in. Exactly. But like, but that idea, I, yeah, yeah, I've battled with that. I the the, the thought of actually because that 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 is There's a killer your TikTok idea. strategy. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. You do that, and yeah, that's oh man. You actually, yeah, because I mean it's. If I put a GoPro, are you allowed that, to? Uh yeah, yeah. There's nothing that says you can't. And you're allowed to publicly post. Yeah, yeah. Because awesome. even even for recently, like I, I did get an email from from Uber, which they sent to drivers, where they were actually asking for creatives, um, and they wanted to. I, I don't know if it's kind of like a, a um, sort of uh, thing that they're trying to do, or trying yeah. to find. Because a lot of people that drive Uber are people that have their own business, so they're trying to start something. So, yeah. you know, Uber try to actually neuter that in people and try to, those are well, the people that want to. So, yeah. so <clears throat> I mean, you can say what you want about a company you work for or, or not. Yeah, yeah. Is Uber legit? Are they, do they look after you? Uh, oh, no. No, 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 no. I mean, <laughs> for uh, the way I look at it, it works for what I need it for. Okay. Like it works best for what I need it for. Yeah. I, I don't know if it would be, if I would recommend to someone, like, okay, start driving Uber full time. Because for me, it's a means to an end. It's not like I'm like that's that's my way of like that, that's my end or be. It's like an older version mm. of retail, but you have to drive people places. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and look, at it, you actually make good money from it. Yeah, well, that's if, what I mean. Because like yeah. I've heard that you don't. I heard that Uber, you know, is that unrealistic with their like how much cut they take, you know, the fuel and all that stuff. Oh. And, that, and then that uh, Netflix series that they made, did you yeah. watch that? No, I haven't. Which, which one is this? They made a net, uh, Netflix, I think it was on Netflix, but um, yeah. it was a whole series about the Uber story. Mm. And uh, it wasn't a documentary. It was like one of those acted ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really fascinating. True. Like, okay. I don't know exactly how accurate yeah. it is, but look, I'm just like, damn. No, I have to check it out. But look, the, the way I look at it for me personally is cause I've, because I've done it six years and it's been a lot of trial and error right now like I, i've figured out the best way to make it work for me yeah because if you ask an uber driver who let's say owns their car and has to worry about uh service in their car paying for petrol yeah rego. Uh, rego insurance i rent a car like i've rented cars for the last two years i don't even own own my car I'm always driving a brand new car. So how does that work <clears throat> with with renting? Like, how much how much uh, a day does it cost? Um, I mean, it's it's not like a day for me it's because I've kind of like got a relationship with the guys I went from, and that that's how they normally run the on a weekly basis. If let's say if you don't, yeah, you can get like a daily uh, rent for for a day if you wanted something temporary. But for example, I. I at the moment I'm driving like a little uh, Corolla a hybrid, and it's probably like 330 a week. Yeah, 
but that covers everything. That covers radio, insurance, servicing. It's a brand new car. I got the car at like zero kilometers. So I'm always in a brand new car. Yeah. I drive it for two months. So the company I, I rent from, like by the time they hit, I, I hit 15,000 kilometers, I take it back and swap out for another brand new car. So I've, I've driven so many different cars. I, I drove a Range Rover Evoque at some point. I drove a VW Tiguan. Um, I've got that. That's my one. They're, they're nice. They're that, nice. That's actually been one of my favorite ones to drive. Yeah. Like it's a Tiguan's really good as far like it's it's a, it's a fun drive. Even um, you can now get Teslas if you want. You know. I mean, <clears throat> three hundred bucks or three hundred and thirty bucks a week, give or take. Mm. Plus, and, and that includes fuel. Did you say? No, it doesn't include. No, fuel. it doesn't include. Yeah. So minus fuel, but everything else. Mm. Um, you know, like the people that get car loans and they're paying. I mean, there was one point I was paying $918 a month for the car oh, that I, I know. Yeah, right. I took an L when I was a teenager. True. Oh, I had a couple SS, of them. SS, VE, Commodore, V8. I fucking, had a v, VZ executive. 900 and yeah. Yeah. But like I've always thought if I – like if you purchase a brand new car, especially if it's like a top-end one, and I'm not like, talking Ferrari or whatever, but like yeah. a $100,000 car, like a Nissan Patrol or something. Mm. Divide that into weekly rate, you'd still be, you'd still be paying less, but you don't own the car. But when you when you sell the car, you don't really get much. It's a depreciating asset. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it's a cost of cost of doing business, I guess. And it if is. you rent a car, you can you put it in your put it in your business. Like, yeah, you know, 100%. it's a business expense. Back the tax, yeah, and the, and it's a tax write off, right? Yeah. So yeah. something that I've always kind of wanted to or even like another example is last year uh, i got in a pretty bad car crash yeah like i got t-borne by a prado because i was in a, one of the new outlanders the mitsubishi outlanders they're pretty pretty big sturdy cars like actually car rode over twice your car yeah yeah you rolled i rode yeah rode twice so Fuck. i got i got photos it looked it was stupid like the car was complete write-off but yeah because it, the guy ran a stop sign, and this I had a customer in the back of the car as well. Oh shit! Yeah, so so everything was fine, no scratch. N- no scratch. No, no, none of us was hurt. Not completely. And open. you rolled the car twice. Rolled the car twice. Like it hit the the rear the rear like, uh, left wheel. So I remember at the time it was happening because I, I was I was driving past and I saw him stop, but then I, as I'm driving past, I saw him start to move. So I actually tried to accelerate, but then it hit the rear like the rear just, corner. Just clipped ya. Clipped, and then like yeah. Me. Wow, wow. It felt like I, it was a slow motion. Like at this, I was like, oh, what the fuck? So, yeah. What did it feel like <clears throat> when you're like mid-rotation? Oh, it's one of those where I just had to shut my eyes and just hold my body Like steady. a roller coaster sort of thing. Yeah, and I actually had to make sure, because you usually, you know, they say if you're a car crash, you don't, don't hold your body rigid. But because you was rolling out, like I didn't want to actually let my body swing. And hit your head yeah, on exactly. the side. And yeah, exactly. And lucky thing, like it's because you know, the, the, the airbags on the, on, the, on, the, on the doors. So completely, yeah, the, the car was all good. Like, I mean, we were all good. Not The car was fucked up. But the, the, the main thing I'm trying to say is like it's, that was a rental. The very next day I was in another car. <laughs> They gave me the exact same car. And what about your client? Did oh, they sue good. or anything? Uh, yeah, I mean, we both got like a payout. Like, it's, yeah, we went to the hospital. Oh. And yeah. We, we, From we insurance? Did, uh, yeah, yeah. How long were you out for? I uh, mean, the next day you were driving already. Yeah, I was driving the next day. <laughs> yeah. Man rolled his car or a rental. Yeah. Drive the next day. You know? Yeah. But I mean, it's... One Only from Zambia. <clears throat> <laughs> I mean, I'm from Russia, so I'd probably yeah, do the yeah, same yeah. thing. You true, know? true. We, we get hit by a tank and keep going. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's like it's... The, the, the worst thing I had was like because my, my thumb was caught in the steering wheel, I just felt like a sprain in that bit there. But I was like, ah, that's... Because if I show you the photos of the car, you'd be like, how did you survive? But and like, not a scratch on your client. Not a single scratch. Holy shit! And what about the old mate that clipped uh, you? Yeah, he. I mean, like they were good. He was a Prado. Like he was. Yeah, oh shit. Yeah. Plus, I mean, he's because he was him, his wife, and his daughter in the oh, back. Oh, Like geez. the daughter was traumatized because. So like, they were okay. They didn't. They, yeah. They, they didn't okay. roll or anything. No, no, no nothing. Yeah, like fuck. because like they were coming from like a stop stop speed, so like it just because ours one was moving, so like that oh, that didn't. Yeah. It, it just his bumper fell off, <laughs> so. You know? Yeah, I mean that's that's a that's a story. Yeah, oh, yeah. There's, yeah. There's a few of those. There's, there's, there's a few of those. A, I mean, just random stories. Random. Oh stories. man, I love the yeah. random stories. I mean, yeah. we could 
We could talk about music and your upbringing and things like that, but let's yeah. get all the juicy stuff. You know, that's good shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, they'll probably come naturally. Just yeah, naturally no, that's, in conversation. That's, that's all. I'm, I'm glad yeah. I got one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, I, I tried to te- I tend to steer the conversation into something of value for the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. And, uh, um, But yeah, but like with the Uber stuff, it, it looks after you, pays well, mm. it's, it's doing what you need it to do and there's a means to an end. What yeah. is your next plan? Um, the next plan is currently is because um, part of my, let's say, slowing down, not, not even like it, my conscious reason for- um, Do you have kids? No, I don't. Okay. Not yet. I have a partner, but yeah, we're planning on having kids, but not for another couple of years. Yeah, same. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, this, so that's why it's like now it's like, okay, push, push, push. Yes, and I then, feel that. Yeah. It's weird because like people have kids- like yeah. sometimes a lot of the time unplanned yeah. and some would consider early because I see a lot of parents mm. in their 20s go and don't have kids until you're 30. Yeah. You know, and, uh, well, then why the fuck did you have kids then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. it was an accident. Oh, okay, fair enough. You know. We uh, have that luxury of not had kids yet. Yeah. But we yeah. want kids. Exactly. And, you know, we're going to take it as it comes, but mm. we want to hustle so that – because I see a lot of parents – not give any time for their kids or yeah. much time for their kids. Oh, 100%. Because they're working so much to provide yeah. food on the table and, you know, all that mm. stuff. And this is where the funny part comes in. You know, like I can't speak for everybody at all. Yeah, yeah. It's a, only my observation. I just want to make sure that I – because I have this chance, I want to yeah. hustle yeah. and then be as present as possible by the time I have kids. Oh, 100%. And not, and not like continue the hustle like – Oh, unwind. Yeah. Whereas I see a lot of parents, they, they work harder because they realize, shit, yeah, I need to make yeah. more money to keep this kid alive. Kids, kids are an investment. Like yeah, kids, they are. The, the, um, they, yeah. they need like that attention yeah. and like financially as well. It's just, yep. yeah, they need a financially, lot Financially, emotionally. Yeah. I mean, financially, yeah. it depends if how much finance <laughs> – yeah. Um, but like the cost of living, are, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's just high. It is. And then, um, and then with, with the emotional stuff, you need to be there yeah. first and foremost oh, for the emotional part to come. Yeah. Being a former school teacher, <clears throat> it was, I've seen a lot of shit. Like the parents yeah. did the wrong thing. True. And I don't want to give advice not being a parent, but yeah. observing oh, all these different parents, yeah, I start yeah. to see a, a pattern. And yeah. the biggest one is give, you, give time to your kids. Oh, 100%. You know? Yeah. They're there to figure shit out, but they need someone to trust. And exactly. With social media out there and all this shit that, that, that comes mm. out of it, and that's why I don't know if you've seen my uh, stuff recently on Instagram. Okay. I've been putting content out that's a bit more educational. Yeah, yeah, right. Like topical, like mm. credit cards. I did yeah, one about. Yeah, I saw one of those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that's what I'm kind of re, rebranding myself yeah, to be nice. less, less of good. the – Random shit, yeah. more of the purposeful stuff. And I'm yeah, already yeah. seeing parents True. share it to their yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like one, one girl um, <clears throat> yesterday, mm. she tagged her son because I know them. True. Tagged her son in it and he's a fan of me. Yeah, from, yeah. From, and I'm like, that is what I want. I want, yeah. I want thousands of parents sharing my oh, shit. 100%, yeah. Because they're like, see, Sev's saying it. Yeah. You know, learn with Seb. That's the hashtag. Exactly. But um, so yeah, you want kids. You've got to hustle at the moment. Yeah. Um, what's your ultimate goal for your creative space, your music? Um, for me, it's because even like kind of like the, the next step we're kind of building towards. For I mean, ultimately for me, as I just want, let's say, the freedom to like yeah to have the financial, obviously the financial freedom, and also just be able to do things that inspire me but it goes from a from a let's say from the music standpoint because i've had um about two or three years ago i, I potentially had a deal from universal like a publishing deal from universal music which i didn't feel was right for me because also i, I always sit and actually i'm honest with myself 100 percent like okay is this the right thing for me or am i doing it just because it's a cool thing to do because mm. anyone would be like oh yeah i'm signed to universal like you know it's 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 a flex, but then at the same time you yeah. sold, you sold your soul. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So for me, it's like even as far as like yeah, I see myself like I'm Perth is on a, always going to be my home. I don't have a desire to really move and go and live anywhere else. I grew up here. That's how, more than almost half my life I've been living here. Mm. 
So in my ideal world, I'd be, let's say, obviously I want to be able to travel and tour, but it has to be on my time. So let's say because like even like the, the artists I go to actually see uh, or tour with or actually see uh, be a part of their shows, you can kind of see how it's they're getting exhausted. Like yeah, like they would come here, they'll be here on a Friday, then like they'll have to fly out tomorrow morning to go to Melbourne and go and perform there on, on mm. tomorrow from like, on Saturday yeah, night. Yeah, they're a circus performer. You know, like yeah, they've, they've, they've been yeah. to Perth, they actually haven't gotten to see the sights in Perth. Yeah. So for me, ideally, it would be like, yeah, if, if I'm traveling to go to go and perform, let's say, if, if I'm going, yeah, if I want to perform to, in France, take take a whole week and actually, yeah, have the show there and then also be able to have a holiday, which is what we're planning yeah. on doing that later this year. We're actually going to L.A. Hey. <clears throat> so, yeah, we managed to actually organize a, a show over there with, a, a, like, his name is Every Harden. So he's, we, we actually worked with him last year. So uh, because it's a, it's a kind of show we, we, we started uh, called Reup. Rehab. So we, re-up. Like, yeah, re-up. So, actually, it's here. Re-up. Yeah, re-up. So, uh, R-E-U-P. So, re-up. Oh, re-up. Yeah, like, on drug re-up. So... Oh yeah, 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 but no, nothing to do with that. But anyway, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's it's something we've been doing because of, when we started that, it was more like because um, I also had a bit of the frustration of having to uh, because like you, like I said, um, I've got a pretty prominent following in Zambia, in Africa actually. Most of my fan base is African African fan base. So yeah, maybe a big deal over there, but I'm still an up and comer here. So I still got like lost to proof. So that that the, it's kind of like an interesting predicament that I was put in, to where like I still have to prove myself to people here as far like to what what I can do. Yeah, or what my the, the, are. the CPM's <laughs> not that great here, is it? Exactly. No, not so much. Not so much. But also, it's 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 my own doing where my my being not wanting to let's say network and intermingle with too many people and I like to keep it close knit with mm. my team that that's what's holding holds me back and I'm aware of it so usually like I, yeah it's uh, I'm aware of my flaws but I'm also accepting of them yeah. and it's what I'm prepared to, to to deal with and not but when I actually sat and reflected with that it's like okay yeah uh it, it may get in the world let's say me getting uh gigs to actually perform here like yeah I, I kind of like hit a cap like I, the thing I haven't done is festivals like I would like that. That was kind of kind of like my my next level because you got to push I've, it. You know, a hundred percent. I performed like Metro City. I'm, I'm actually performed there next week, but I've performed there like countless times now. And I know that venue really well. Yeah, but, I think I think <clears> your best bet is to yeah, pan out as many places as you can yeah. in Australia, but also you know online. Yeah, yeah. Organically, so like the TikTok thing will definitely work if you oh, get 100%, 100%. there. Because like I've got a friend. Um, his name's Sam. And he he does he does his own original songs with guitar. Yeah, he's a surfy kid. Mm. And I, I met him recently. He was busking out out, out in um, in the city, right? Mm. And he he had like forty thousand followers on on Instagram. I was yeah, like, right. Fuck, that's pretty good. Yeah. And another <clears throat> forty thousand on TikTok. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I was like, okay, he's he's doing well. Yeah. And then like, it, and it wasn't because of me, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a week later. He did a thing where he went out and sat next to a girl and played guitar. And yeah. You know that one? Mm. And he went door knocking around the places. I'm trying True. to get him on, on the podcast here. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of hard now because of what happened. But one of those videos went viral, like 10 million view viral right. on Instagram. Wow. All of a sudden he got verified all of a sudden. And he was on The, the Voice as well. Jeez, okay. But he didn't really get much of a following after mm. The Voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was <clears> just <throat> on The Voice. Yeah. Anyway, he got verified and all that shit. And then for this one video, he's on like 200,000 followers now or something Jeez. like that on, on Instagram. That's nuts, yeah. Like organic and, and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. he's getting gigs and stuff and mm. everyone's starting to figure out who he is and yeah. and God knows what happens next. You know, you mm. get the wrong manager and you, you sell your soul. Universal. Oh, 100%. So yeah. it's the same with you. So it's, it's only a matter of time. Yeah. You have to put yourself out there. Yeah. So and that, that, that's, you know, I completely agree with you. I reckon the Uber thing is, is, your, <clears throat> is, is it. This is yeah. your sign. I am. I am here to tell you that. <laughs> and and then when it works, yeah, I'll have a snippet of me telling you, and I go, Sev, oh, no, I, Sev I, knows. I always I always give the credit where it's due. So yeah. oh, you don't have to give credit. It's all documented now. Exactly. I'll just pull out exactly. HIC, yeah. You. Right. Yeah. But I mean, um, with. Yeah, I completely agree with you on that one. But I mean, like, it's um, based on what's. 
the direction we're kind of steering towards as well is, mm. uh, or what I was trying to say, like I said, with other not being able to actually get um, local shows here is we ended up thinking, why don't we actually start it ourselves? So that's how we came up with the idea for Reup. Is more mm. like that fuel. Is like it's a regular show. We do it like every quarter, like every three months. Yeah, and promote to, the shit out of it leading up to it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, instead of me actually having to go and beg people for stage time, like I'll you just make create, your own yeah, stage I make time. my own. I that's good. There, there's a team of like probably five, six of us that are MCs, and we know other other people locally, and uh, we've done it probably four times now, and yeah. sold out the last two. And like also what what I pride uh, what I pride myself as even like with the whole team is like this is because coming up like I was getting all of these shows but I never took I never took a single dollar for it I wasn't expecting it because that was the benefit for me was the experience and the yeah, reach it was and getting that's, me that <clears> is something <throat> the younger kids don't get yeah yeah they want money straight away it's oh, like you need man. experience you I uh, I know I know and and I don't so regret it it's so frustrating because yeah. I have I've had people like I've I've dealt with and they. They said, um, should have paid me more money from the start. I'm like, well, oh, fuck. Right. Improve yourself. Exactly. Exactly. You know? That's that, that's what I always push with people. I'm like, yeah, you always got to be self-aware and you always got to be honest with mm. yourself. Like, don't... No expectations either. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just like, do it. If, if you were on... If, if you were sitting on the other, on the other uh, end of the chair and actually you were in my position... Would you pay yourself that much? Like that's how I always look at it. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, pretty much. Yeah. So uh, that's how it always comes to it. But then, like, then you <clears> got to be careful about imposter syndrome too. Like, I got. Oh uh, yeah. You gotta, you gotta value yourself properly. Yeah. And you gotta put everything on the table and go right. Where is my experience? Where am I at now? How many yeah. accolades? What are my achievements? And <clears> over time, and this is where the experience comes in. You actually mm. get more confident going, oh, actually, no, I have put five years into yeah. TikTok, for example, for me. Yeah. I am worth more money than all these other dickheads who exactly. are, you know, going, hey, I'm a TikTok guru now. I'm like, exactly. are you? Or did you just get lucky in the first month you know? and now you're just trying to make a bag really quickly yeah, yeah, yeah. and two 100%. years from now no one's going to hear from you? Yeah. I've seen so many of yeah. these, you know. Oh, hundred oh, percent. So many scam artists 100%. out there. It's like everyone's a everyone's a professional or everyone's an expert. Yeah. It's like yeah, because even like uh, uh, I was actually having a chat with my uh, my partner because like it usually we get all of these kind of like spiritual uh, videos or like oh like oh this this star sign is like this. I'm like. <laughs> Everyone seems to be an expert. It's like it. I can't. For me, I'm always skeptical. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm a optimistic pessimist. Yeah. So it's like I'm all. I'm never gonna really take what someone says. I'm like complete gospel until you actually sit and reflect with it and see how it actually you know, yeah. resonates with me. At and the then core. the real <clears throat> experts, they will be able to give you that information with no expectations. Yeah. And yeah. then once you've, you know. Exactly. Ve ve verified it. Yeah. You'll come back and go. Even like with with, with you, like oh, those. As soon as I saw, because um, I think you're, one, you're the very first person I hit up about coming onto the podcast when I was actually thinking, okay, I need to start making podcast appearances. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, shout out to you for getting back to me instantly as well. But it's like, for me, it's, uh, I always see like, okay, this person has that which I'm trying to obtain. I should probably listen to them because like they yeah. have, you know, so actually putting your ego aside and actually listening and actually, yeah, if you, you also don't want to be caught up in, get caught up in your own way. Yeah. So like, yeah, it, it's different now as you're telling me all of these things, I'm taking as you're saying like, okay, doing the, with the GoPro in the car with Uber, I am listening to that, you know, because of like, okay, yeah. I'm excited, man. Yeah. If I, if I could both. rap, <clears throat> that's a, exactly what I would do. I would just rap to both. people randomly. But uh, the, the Ubering has actually helped me in so many ways, like even like promoting shows. Sometimes I'll just have flyers, like with, with the re-up. Like it's, it, it's on a weekend because of like, let's say Friday, Saturday night, I'll, I'll pick up uh, 150, 200 people on, on the weekend. That's people I can promote to. Like, oh, I've got a show coming up in Frio. Like if I'm driving around Fremantle, or I'm going to be performing at Clancy, so you guys should come down. That's helped me in so many ways. That's a good well. idea. So yeah. you, you would station yourself <clears throat> in the surrounding suburbs of where you're going to yeah. go. That's yeah. that's genius. Yeah, you know, and it's like yeah. nightlife. People are already drunk. They, they, you know they're going out. So that's people who are already doing what you would like them to do or just steer them like, okay, yeah. I want to be performing here instead next week. So you, you guys can come definitely down to that leverage well. it. You can definitely mm. leverage the Uber, Uber driver thing as well. But like, mm. you ever seen an Uber driver rap before? Yeah. Do you want to see one? Do you want to see one live? <laughs> yeah, I've I've had I've had multiple times when I've well, it's because like when I looked on my app, I've 
done 13,000 trips. 13,000? What's 13, your star rating? Uh, 4.99. Oh, yeah. 4.99. I think I'm like one of the <laughs> highest rated people in, in, in Perth. Like it's 4.99. Far out. Not just the Afro king, you're the Uber king. You know? <laughs> 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 but yeah, that, that's, uh, it's, I think the wrapping in the cars helped with that as well. Yeah. Plus that's the, so. That's like a difference. That is that is that is your mm. proof of concept right there. Yeah. Four point nine nine star rating. Yeah. Thirteen thousand. I know. People like you. Mm. Now you have to document that. Uh, uh, you're right. You're hundred percent right. If people, I actually had someone last week. Yeah. Who, who, because for me, it's like I never the Uber rating. As it's for me, it's just it's just there. I've never really actively been trying to get a perfect rating. It's just like last week I had someone coming like, oh, 4.99. Like, oh, so how, how did you get this? I'm like, I don't know. I, I can't tell you. And uh, at another lady, she was like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you like a two-star rating because she was pissed off like because um, uh, cause usually with a driver, if let's say you order an Uber, right? Like it's usually you're on the lookout for the car. You're looking for the license plate. Yeah. When I pull up as a driver, I'm pulling up on the lo general location where you are. So it's on you to also look out for the car. I can't guess which person on the street is the person looking for the Uber. Yeah. So like though she was like standing like across the road on, on the other side with her husband. And then like I, I was, because I'm waiting, usually I wait, like, okay, I've arrived. And then um, she like, I think that they'd, they'd, they'd stared at me like a, like a few times. And like, I can't guess, like they're not giving me any indication. Like no, usually people wave like, oh yeah, this is like, a, I'm your passenger, nothing. And then she came like minutes later, like she's, disgruntled like she's you saw us standing there Why what ethnic come? group was this this older white lady yeah classic white lady yeah classic it's classic white lady yeah but for me it's like usually like i that's i'm i'm also rooted I, I take my stand i'm like yeah how am i supposed to guess that you're the you're the person i'm meant to pick up you're like oh i'm giving you a two-star rating I'm like yeah go ahead i don't give a fuck about the ratings <laughs> like give me the it doesn't make a difference to, to me. me you know yeah, yeah. yeah. Just take me down to 4.98 so it <laughs> so so it got to the point where I was arguing with her, the husband also, because her husband saw that she was in the wrong, so he couldn't, like, she was like, oh, do you want us to get out? I'm like, yeah, you can get out. I don't need to take a trip. I'm, I'm ride sharing. Like, I'm sharing my ride. I don't work for you. So she got out. I drove off. So, so I, have, I have a few of those as well. But it's like I don't have to, to stand up for bullshit if, you know, if, I don't, yeah, if I don't want to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, without, without adding uh, too much more of a just making us an Uber podcast uh, yeah. about it, um, what uh, what's something that you can give to the kids who want to become rap artists or MCs or mm. you know the next Afro king or queen? Uh, I'd probably say self belief more than anything. It's knowing yourself. Um, I'm one person who prides myself on. I've never been one to follow trends. Like you, you rarely catch me wearing like it. So oh, this is a trendy. Personally, I've never owned a pair of Air Maxes uh, on one pair of Jordans. <laughs> yeah, Brian, I mean, no, not to knock Air Maxes. Like, it's <clears throat> not to knock them. Like, my, my, one of my best friends, he has, like, it's several pairs of them. But because I never grew up like that, so it's not kind of, like, ingrained in me to actually think mm. to go to go and get them. Usually for me, I've always been like, okay, uh, it's even, like, the, I think that the, the subconsciously the whole thing with the Afro is I want it to be different. Yeah. Do you have a pair of J's? I do have one pair of J's, <laughs> one single pair of J's, which I've worn for like seven, eight years now. Yeah, well, yeah, that's trendy. Oh, it is, it is. <laughs> but I didn't buy it because of the trend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I bought it because they looked good. I, I, feel, yeah. I felt they were good, and I wanted them. What what pair is it? <clears throat> um, I couldn't even tell you. Like the flight one eight two. I don't, I don't know. I, I believe you. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, see, that's the thing. I don't even know what type of J's they are. It's like, yeah, it, it's yeah. just never been my... Usually, if I see a pair of J's, like, okay, that one looks good, I will go and yeah. go and buy it, but I'm never really, like, yes. finding the next one or when the next one going to drop or which one is this. You don't have I'm, time, man. You got, nah. you, got, you got rides to deliver. Yeah. You plus got passengers even, to deliver. You know? And beats to, <laughs> and beats to write. Um, yeah. But what, it, it's... Yeah, yeah like I was, I was saying, it's like self-belief and knowing who you are and that allows you to know what path you're meant to take. Because even with now with music, it's like it's, for me, it's, it's a calling. It's something I was called to do. It's, it's not something I consciously decided to do. But it's like, yeah, it just so happened, like you were saying, the universe just led me along this path based on my own also 
self-belief and not really wanting to compromise for anyone or anything, it led me to the path that even now, like it's, yeah. we're here now for a reason. And you, and you, paid, you paid attention <clears throat> to yourself. That, 100%. That was what my <clears throat> TEDx talk was about. Yeah, I talked true. about that exact thing is mm. that self-awareness yeah. is the first important thing, the thing that you can build in your life. Yeah. Mix that in with self-esteem mm. because hopefully, luckily enough, you were nurtured. Yeah. And you were provided with some oh, sort of a – and, you know, like we come from countries that there's not many opportunities. Yeah. yeah. You have to go into a system that's somewhat communist. I'm not mm. much too familiar about how it is in Zambia. Yeah. But I dare say that there's a lot more opportunity in Australia. Oh, 100%. 100%. At, at the end of the day, no matter what the opportunity is, you need to pay attention to yourself. Yeah. And look at the signs – Look at how the universe gives you the cards and goes, yeah. you want to cut? And I see so many people just like, mm. they they tell me, I want to do this. Yeah. And I get messages every week. Say, mm. I want to become a photographer. I'm like, great. Grab, grab, yeah. grab your phone now and go take 10 photos you find interesting yeah. right now. Mm. I don't hear from him again. True. It's like, you don't want to be a photographer. You just yeah. think it's cool right now. It's <laughs> trending. <laughs> Exactly. Everyone exactly. wants to be a SoundCloud <clears throat> rapper. It's just like, all right, well, go, uh, yeah. go sing something. You know, 100%. Or, or not even go sing something. Show me, show me your latest beat. Oh, I don't have one yet. I'm like, what are you waiting for? You know? You should be already it, doing it. We're in the time and age where it's the easiest thing to actually be able to do what it is you want to do. Like everything, the, the resources mm. are pretty much there in our reach. It's just, you got to go look for it. Whatever is distracting you right now, mm. focus on that. Yeah. If that becomes your obsession, give that. Yeah. Give that all your attention. Yeah. You know, have a have an income. Yeah. Don't 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 throw everything away to focus fully on that obsession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, be smart about it. Oh but yeah. Then, but then just go all in because mm. it is not worth regretting it later. Oh, 100 like, percent. Because even like it is, even like, like I I got distracted by a point like when you're asking about what um what we're trying to do as far like or what the next step like. We're, it's, this is kind of like the transitional thing moving yeah. on from the Uber. Yeah. Like with this shirt here, like this is something we actually made in-house. So we actually started printing our own shirts. So Put we bought merch. all these. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So instead of going out to actually have merch printed, why don't we do it ourselves and actually even other people come to actually Yeah, it's print so hard. We, we printed shirts for a little while ourselves. We have, yeah. um, we bought the little steamer thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got the cricket cut machine. Yeah, I got the cricket as well. We've um we've moved on from that since. Yeah. But once upon a time we did that and we made yeah. a shirt. I was like, oh that's easy. Yeah. But you then know? we didn't make it into a business, but I was like Sst. Yeah. We know that it's possible. Oh, so 100%. possible. You, 100%. The only annoying thing is getting the vinyl from the that one shop in Malaga. Yeah. You know, there's the another one? one now. Yeah. Yeah, there's another one now. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You know, but um, yeah, there's opportunities for everybody. Oh, 100%. You just got to go looking for them. That's it. Yeah. One, one final piece of advice before we head off. Um, what would it be? Just anything. Anything in life. Give me, mm. give me the quote of the day. Yes. You're putting me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do you need a beat? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, you're not a freestyler. I can give you an acapella though. Okay, go on. Um, I'm like a people blessed with an afro and bark until I'm deceased. Forming up at the mouth like it's rapping games of disease. So everyone grab your popcorn. Get to sipping your Slurpees. Once I get on this beat, I ain't never living like herpes. Took a bite at the sun, so I'm glowing out of my bottom. I was conversating with Jesus. He told me, get him. I got him. My lyrics are therapeutic, so fuck the birds and the bees. I'd rather put out some music and choke on some double Ds. While I'm listening to my old bangers. With some homies, I was hanging around like cold hangers. With cheerleaders with limited clothes and bold banners. I hate diamonds. I'm living life on a gold standard. So all my folks. Stand up. You know? Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, Mac, nah, for thank coming you, in. Man, appreciate it. It was fun. It was Love fun. your work. Yeah, likewise, man. Likewise. For uh, for everybody else at home, you know where to go. Check out the description and uh, yeah, hit us up on the uh, on the conversation polls and uh, you can hit us up on the uh, Spotify section. You can actually comment from this episode or on the YouTube's. Uh, mate, leave a comment. Tell me what you think about the episode and what your favorite part was. Until next time. Good thanks. Peace.